Hey guys, um, this is Miss Lily. Today we're going to talk about critical points and where graphs increase and decrease. So um, hopefully you have your notes. Uh, this was attached to some of the notes that you had from the last video. So hopefully you have those. Alright, so if you look at your notes, it has some blanks there. Critical points are points where the graph changes its direction or shape. So direction or shape, okay? All right, extrema are points where the graph changes direction And the function has a minimum or maximum value, which is called a relative or absolute at these points. Okay, A point of inflection, we won't talk about this a whole lot, um, but since it's here, um, that's where the graph changes its shape, but not its direction. Okay, So if you come over here on the graph and you look, um, the graph is continuous, it has an arrow and goes down forever, but at this point here, this would be considered a relative maximum because that's the highest point. This is a point of inflection, and then this would be the relative minimum. Okay, so, all right, a point with the greatest value compared to points around it is your relative maximum. And the point with the greatest value over the entire domain is the absolute maximum. So if you look at the picture here, you have a relative maximum, you have a minimum, a relative minimum, and this is called an absolute maximum. It's still a relative maximum as well. You have two of those, but because you have two on the same graph, we can use absolute maximum to define that. All right, now, if you have that, let me scroll down just a bit. All right, so a point with the least value compared to points around it is called the relative minimum. Okay, so we've got a relative minimum and we've got an absolute minimum again. So I bet you can guess what the next one is. Alright, so this is a relative and this is called an absolute Alright, so looking at some examples, if we, if we look at example 1, and it says give the coordinates that classify the extrema for the graph of each function. Use your graphing calculator to approximate if needed. Okay, so for number 1, if you look, it comes down here, and it has one low point, turns and goes back up, so this one point is really the only point that we're going to worry about on this graph. Since it um, turns up, which means it points at the bottom, then it's going to be a minimum. Since there's only one, um, we can call it the absolute minimum. So you're just going to be over right 
Let's see, over one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like that's going to be at four, negative five. And that would be absolute. minimum <coughs> excuse me All right if you look at number two you're gonna see um, let me see if I can move it up just a little bit Right, if you look at number two, it's got a couple humps on it, okay? So you're going to have more than um, one answer for this one. So you've got a high point right here. So that's going to be your absolute maximum. You've got another maximum right here. So that's going to be a relative maximum. So you've got those two points. And then you've got a relative minimum here. So we're going to look at... Your graphing calculator, if you type this in your graphing calculator in the y equals window and you hit graph, you can do second trace and then you can find those ordered pairs to give you a little bit better um, answer for that. So if you look, um, this one is going to be, You may want to pause the video and use your calculator and then start it back. So this one's going to be absolute maximum at about negative 1.53 and 2.94. Okay, so that would be this point right here. Then you're going to have a relative minimum down here and you have to do second trace again and you um, should find the minimum, relative minimum button on there. And again, you may want to pause the video to give you time to use your calculator to look at that. And you should get about 0.26 and negative 4.25. And that's going to be a relative minimum. And then we're going to have this last point here, which is at the top of a hump, so that's going to be a maximum. It's going to be a relative maximum since this one is higher. And go to your calculator and do second trace one more time, and you should get about 1.27 and negative 2.69. And that one is a relative maximum. Okay? All right. Moving right along. All right, if we need some more examples on that, go through those in practice and let me know. Um, if you need help with those, I'll be happy to help you. Um, right now, we're going to go ahead and skip down here to the increasing and decreasing. Try to finish up our notes. All right, so moving from left to right. So on your graph, if you trace your pencil from left to right, that's how we read from left to right. We do the same thing with functions. A function may increase, means it goes up, remain constant, remains it's flat, or decrease, means it goes down. Okay, so if you look at this graph, it's got some examples of the functions here. So this is kind of looking at domain again. So we're going to increase from negative infinity, because this is your negative x's, so negative infinity up to negative 1. So we're going to put negative infinity to negative 1. Okay? So, again, we're looking at our x's to determine whether it increases, decreases, or uh, stays constant because we're talking about going left to right, which is our x-axis, so that's our domain. All right, our constant, it is constant from negative 1 to 1, 2, 3, 4. So from negative 1 to positive 4 is going to be constant. 
and then it's going to decrease. The graph goes down if you take your pencil from left to right and trace it. It goes down from 4 to positive infinity. All right, so hopefully that's not too difficult. And let's look at let's look at some examples here. Give the intervals on which each function increases, decreases. Use your calculator to approximate if necessary. Okay? So if we look at the graph and you trace it from left to right for number five, it goes down, then it goes up. So it's going to decrease to this point, then it's going to increase. So it's going to decrease from negative infinity. So right here's decrease. So it's going to decrease from negative infinity to positive three. And then from three to infinity, it's going to increase. All right, what about number six? So we're always going from left to right. So from left to right, this graph goes down. From left to right, this graph goes down. So it's not going to increase anywhere. Even though it looks like it goes up, if you trace it from left to right, it's going down. So it would be a decrease. So this graph has no increase. Where does it decrease? It decreases from negative infinity to... 1, 2, 3, 4, about negative 5. So it's going to decrease from negative infinity to negative 5. And then it's also going to decrease from negative 5 to positive infinity. Okay. All right, look at number 7. This graph goes from left to right. It's going to go increasing pretty much the entire time. So it's going to be negative infinity to infinity. And then we look to see where it decreases. Well, if you're going left to right, it increases. So it doesn't decrease anywhere. So that would be none. Okay. All right. So there is a few more examples on here. I suggest that you look through these last few and see that you can write those and remember you're looking at your domain so this one would decrease through this interval it's going to increase on this interval and then it's going to decrease again so practice writing that and then it's going to decrease for number nine then it's going to increase it's going to decrease and then it's going to increase again so you're going to have a couple different answers for both of that here and number 10 is going to increase, decrease. I can't tell if that just curves. I'd have to graph it on my calculator and zoom in. And then it's going to decrease, and then it's going to increase again. So if you have any questions on those and you need help with those, feel free to um, shoot me a message and ask. Well, I hope everything goes well these first two weeks, and I look forward to getting to know you guys. Talk to you later.